How's it going everyone? Thanks for joining me today and for today's video we're cutting out the chassis. Now this can be a very tricky part of the build process if not the most tricky. Ordinarily a chassis is punched out using a, a big machine and then the flat piece of alloy is folded into a box and spot welded. Some people might use a large router uh, others might use chassis punches if you can get them these days, very very handy. Uh, you might use a, a rotary tool such as a Dremel. And those are all great but I understand that a vast majority of people just don't have that specialty equipment. And so I cut out this chassis with using only a hand drill or a power drill if you've got one. I used three clamps. They were F clamps, 100 millimeter. I used some files. A round file was very handy. Um, a half round and a flat file. And probably the most important tool was the drill bit. And I used four snip bits to cut out these circles. And the four snip bit has the blade around the edge, which scores out the circumference of the circle before drilling out the waste material. And we're going to need various pieces of scrap wood. This is a half inch MDF. Also you'll need a length of either 2x4 or even better 2x6. Also print off copies of your templates. Be sure to print out the bottom view or the reciprocal layout templates. This is very important. We could simply print off our sheet and glue it to the aluminium chassis but we would find it very hard to drill accurate holes the drill bit would tend to slip and everything would be misaligned so a better idea is to make a template by gluing the sh template sheet onto a piece of quarter inch MDF and then we can drill accurate holes And just measure out your MDF or whatever kind of wood you're using for your template. And just going to measure it out 10 inch by 6 inch. Just going to check that with the chassis. And yeah, that looks all good. Now let's cut that out. Print out missed a little bit at the top, but it still it still measures 10 by 6, so it's good. And I'm just gonna stick it on. Now we've got our template stuck to our piece of wood and we have to tackle these holes and in order to get them as accurate as humanly possible uh, I like to use a, a little jig I guess you can call it and all it is is a piece of three millimeter thick aluminium or aluminium for our uh, American and Canadian friends and these holes here I'm going to use three millimeter bolts and so I'm going to drill a 3.5 mil millimeter hole through this piece of alloy Now I can go ahead and drill the hole and I know it's going to be in exactly the right position. With this jig technique you can get pretty accurate positioning of your holes and it's not super critical that we get everything exactly but we do have to have some degree of accuracy particularly for the tube socket holes and the mounting holes for the transformer and I haven't included measurements on this sheet because you might be using imperial uh, bolts you might be using metric I'm not sure 
but I've used metric and what I can tell you is that I've used 3.5 millimeter holes or drill bits for the tube sockets I've used 4.5 millimeter drill bits for the output transformer mounting holes and I've used 5 millimeter drill bits for the primary transformer I have yet to drill all the way through my template and I'm using this this good old Stanley drill bit alignment tool if you ever find one of these they're incredibly handy and just put your drill bit through there and pop it in your hole that all came out pretty good flip it over and the holes are nice and neat and I've cut out a scrap piece nine and a half by five and one eighth inch or 240 by 130 millimeters what we're going to do is just put that bit of scrap wood in there and just push that to the front and we've got our nice template and we're just going to put that on top and I'm just going to clamp them together now I'll just turn it over and clamp it to the bench so I can get at the top side and I've got my scrap piece of wood underneath there all clamped underneath sandwiching the aluminium in between the template and the scrap piece of wood and I'll clamp it to the bench with quite a bit sticking out you can do this with as little as three clamps we've got one clamp holding the chassis to the bench we've got one clamp clamping the template and the scrap piece of wood and then we have one free clamp to move around and if we want to drill these holes for example we can, we can just move the clamp over put it as close as we can to the hole I'm going to go ahead and drill my hole right through now I'm just going to mark off the holes which I've drilled so I know they've been done By keeping that clamp very close to the hole, hopefully we've avoided getting that jagged edge on the aluminium as the drill bit goes through, but we'll take all the clamps off and see how we did. Just looking at the underside there, we didn't do too bad at all. I'm not too sure if you can see that, but I ended up using an 18mm Forstner bit and a piece of dowel with some sandpaper on it just to, just to slightly enlarge the hole and that, and that fit the tube socket very nicely. Now these holes here for the wires of the transformers I'm gonna I'm gonna drill a 10 millimeter hole in here and I'm gonna put some grommets in and there's some rubber grommets and these are completely optional you don't have to use these uh, you can get away with uh, having heat shrink over the wires just so they don't rub against the aluminium this D bearing tool is very handy Now it's time to cut out the front and rear panel and important to note again that we're using the reciprocal template printouts and we're going to cut them out in exactly the same way as we did the top template. We're going to mount these on quarter inch MDF 
and we're going to drill the holes in exactly the same way. And use your force nibbits bits to hog out the majority of the cavity. Sandwich that in the vise and I'm just going to clean out the rest of the cavity with various files and sandpaper. Now onto the front panel and just going to put a, a line through the center of the crosshairs all the way along. Just transfer that to the other side and we'll use our small diameter drill bit and drill the center holes. Now those holes to me look not too bad. Uh, let's flip it over and see how close we got. Now this hole seems to be out a little bit and there's a few things that we can do to ensure that these these holes end up straight and the first thing to do is I'm just going to enlarge this hole with the with the same size drill bit I'm just going to pull it down a bit just just so that the center of the hole meets the center line. And already you can see that that's looking a lot better. And if we flip it over, we do the same on the on the other side too. So we just center the hole. And I'm going to do the same with the rest of them. You can just see that they're just minutely off. And I'm just going to just going to try and center all of them. Now with those misaligned holes enlarged slightly, it just gives us a better chance of getting all our holes exactly aligned. Now we're going to have to try and negotiate this lip around the chassis. And to do that, I've screwed down another piece of timber, just scrap NDF, onto the end of my length of, of timber that's clamped to the bench. And that's going to allow me to to put my chassis over the top of it and when I've got my template on there I can all clamp it together and it's going to give me some nice secure backing that I can drill my holes into the into the chassis and that's just gonna provide us with a backstop And that's the rear of the setup and you can see the scrap piece of timber there as the backing for the chassis and the lip. It's a little bit hard to tell but it look, looks pretty good. Do here for the AC inlet I'd get, a, I'd get a very sharp knife or a scribe and and just scribe the the outline of the template just gonna have to get in there with your files and just file down to your scribed line and then try to make as as neat as possible. That didn't come out too bad. I'll just clean it up with a bit of sandpaper and we'll just check and see how it fits. Well that didn't turn out too badly at all, particularly in light of the fact that we just used Forstner bits. And I hope you are able to achieve a similar result with all your holes drilled accurately and in line. And I hope that all your components fit correctly. And now that is a very tricky part of the build and it's good to get this out of the way first. Uh, it isn't easy and just be patient, take your time, get all your templates correct and everything should go smoothly. In the next video, we'll get on to the wiring process 
and I didn't cover any theory in this video because it was quite tricky and I didn't want to drag it on anymore and so I'll cover theory in a separate videos so thanks for tuning in I hope you all have success with your chassis and I look forward to seeing you in the next video